Joan of Arc was born into a peasant family around 1412, amidst the Hundred Years' War between England and France, which devastated the French economy since the battles were fought on French soil. To make the situation even worse, the French king Charles VI was mentally unstable and often unable to rule, leaving a power vacuum for his relatives to vie for regency. In addition to war with England, a civil war broke out between Charles's brother, Duke of Orléans, and Charles's cousin, Duke of Burgundy. The Burgundians would later defect to the side of England and help England subject more French territories to Anglo-Burgundian control. The deranged Charles accused his heir apparent of murdering the Duke of Burgundy, which resulted in the heir apparent being disinherited from the line of succession. As Charles was too ill to govern, his wife was pressured by England into signing a treaty that gave the French throne to the future offspring between the English king and Charles's daughter. When Charles died in 1422, the nominal heir of the French throne became King Henry VI of England, who was born from the aforementioned treaty. Since she was a young child, Joan was keenly aware of the pain and humiliation France suffered at the hands of England as she witnessed the devastation. As a teenager, she had frequent divine visions of angels and saints, which inspired her to look for ways to save France from England. Around the same time, the French countryside became fascinated with a prophecy concerning a virgin maiden taking up arms and banners to save France from the chaos. Joan presented herself as that promised virgin and even broke off a marital arrangement in the ecclesiastical court to remain virgin. Starting in May 1428, Joan repeatedly sought audience with the nobility and persisted in her requests despite multiple rejections. Eventually, she was summoned by the Duke of Lorraine, who was ill at the time and thought Joan could cure him with her divine power, but she reprimanded him for living with his mistress instead. During this period, Charles VII, the former heir apparent who was disinherited, laid claims to the French throne despite his parents' agreement to give the throne to the English king. However, his future was severely threatened by the Anglo-Burgundian control over Orléans, the last obstacle that blocked his enemies from the remainder of his territories. Moreover, as long as his enemies held the region, he was unable to be crowned king at the traditional site for coronation in Reims, which would damage his legitimacy. Joan's divine visions revealed that she must help Charles ascend to the throne, which spurred her to embark on a journey to meet him. She met Charles for the first time in 1429 at his royal court when she was 17. She declared that she would help him reclaim Orléans and lead him to the site of coronation. Charles was suspicious at first, so he sent her to be examined by a council of theologians who confirmed that she was indeed a faithful Catholic. She was also verified to be a virgin through a physical examination by a group of women directed by Charles's mother-in-law. Charles became convinced of her religious devotion and bestowed upon her a set of personalized plate armor, sword, and banner. As part of Charles's entourage, she referred to herself as Joan the Maiden, emphasizing the alignment between her virginity and the prophecy regarding a virgin savior of France. Before her arrival, Charles's faction was becoming increasingly demoralized and hopeless as they could not foresee any decisive victory in the near future. Joan succeeded in raising everyone's spirit by instilling hope through claims of divine visions. Convinced of her divine purpose, she even sent a letter to the enemy leader asserting that God was sending her to drive him out of France. In April 1429, Joan marched with an army to lift the siege of Orléans. Initially, she had no formal military roles and was only treated as a figurehead, but her presence on the battlefield proved to be a drastic difference maker. Instead of staying away from the action as a mere icon, she actively participated in the fighting and went to the front lines. In addition to being inspired by her divinity, the commanders even took her advice on military tactics like where and when to attack. On May 4th, she rode out to join an assault on an enemy fortress and found that the soldiers were retreating after an initial failure. She rallied the soldiers and convinced them to attack again, which led to victory and her army taking the fortress. After that, Charles's army kept pushing for more gains and the enemies began fleeing. Joan was wounded in the process through an arrow shot at her shoulder, but she bravely carried on. The army's success in lifting the siege of Orléans was interpreted by the French as proof of Joan's divinity, but the English, on the other hand, thought she was possessed by the devil. 
After Orléans was saved, Joan insisted that Charles should head to Reims to be crowned king and escorted Charles during the military campaign to clear the path toward Reims. Charles received his coronation on July 17, 1429, with Joan attending the ceremony as a guest of honor. In September, Charles ordered an attack on Paris to reclaim it with Joan as part of the army. However, Joan's divine power failed to prevail this time, which resulted in Charles abandoning the campaign despite being urged by Joan to continue. After this defeat, Joan's divinity came under doubt and her importance at Charles's court diminished. Her relationship with Charles worsened as Charles began to seek peaceful diplomatic solutions, but she kept pushing for military advances. In March 1430, she embarked on a military campaign against the Duke of Burgundy without Charles's authorization and was captured as the attack failed. The English and Burgundians celebrated her capture and put her on trial for heresy. She was interrogated for alleged crimes like wearing men's clothing and having demonic visions. As her interrogators were determined to have her admit to being a heretic, they asked her a trap question about whether she knew if she was in God's grace. If she said she was, she could be convicted of heresy because no one should be certain about being in God's grace. But if she said she wasn't, it could be interpreted as confessing to being a heretic. Amazingly, she overcame this trap question by wisely answering that if she was not in God's grace, she hoped God would put her there. And if she was in God's grace, then she hoped she would remain so. After the interrogators failed to trap her with cunning questions, they tried to intimidate her by showing her instruments of torture but she remained resolute. Despite having no grounds to charge her with heresy, the court found her guilty nonetheless, as England sought to dismantle the perception that Charles's claim to the throne was endorsed by a divinely inspired Joan. She was executed on May 30, 1431 by burning, and her request to be allowed to stare at a cross while being burned to death was granted. Despite news of Joan being burned as a heretic, the French morale refused to be crushed and England was unable to regain momentum in the invasion. To dispel the rumor that his ascension to the throne was facilitated by a heretic, Charles ordered inquiries and retrials of Joan's case, which involved interviewing witnesses of Joan's trial and help from university professors, theologians, and lawyers. The retrial reached the conclusion that charges against her were unjust and invalid. She was canonized in 1920 as a Catholic saint by Pope Benedict XV with a feast day on May 30th, which is the anniversary of her execution.